So again, we have two answer choices that are correct. Um, you'll notice also that I've switched in the way that I'm representing the, the alleles. In the previous problem, I wrote them as a plus a minus. Now I'm writing it them as big A, little a. And it's okay to do this, to use this shorthand nomenclature, because we've been told to assume that dominance is happening here. So we can write the recessive allele, use the little a symbolism to represent the recessive allele. Now, as I said, there's two correct answers. The individual could have, must have a defect in gene A. This pathway, this step must be blocked because no pigment is being made. But because this step is blocked, there are different, all of the possibilities for the B locus are possible. The individual could be big B, big B. They could be big B, little b, both of which are included in this symbol here. Or the individual could be completely defective at both loci. We can't tell if there's a functional B, locus, B allele present because there's no functional A allele present. So we've considered phenotypes where two genes act independently, and then we've started to consider phenotypes where the phenotype caused by the action of one gene depends on what alleles are present at another gene. Um, We've diagrammed really only one type of metabolic interaction so far and analyzed the effects of defective alleles. And we've used phenotypes to predict genotypes. We could do this because we knew the underlying genetic basis of the process that caused the phenotype. Now, coming up next, we're going to think about some more complex effects in biochemical pathways. I hope to see you there.